The payload that a submarine carries is a critical piece of its mission. Submarine roles are shooting torpedoes, shooting missiles. A lot of times there are other things we do with submarines where we want to deploy sensors, unmanned vehicles, unmanned airplanes, drop things on the bottom of the ocean, put things on the surface. Payloads also means um, any weapons, so Mark 48 heavyweight torpedoes, harpoon missiles, tomahawk missiles, manned vehicles, with such as a seal delivery vehicle, those are also payloads. It's the payloads that make the submarine a warfighting machine. And we need to find a way to bring those on to the submarine safely and smoothly. So how can we bring it on, stow it, deploy it, and potentially even bring it back on when we need it? It's not unfamiliar to anybody anymore. The idea that you're putting something that is other than a missile or other than a torpedo, that fact that you're putting that onto a submarine now is has become almost commonplace and is to be expected. It's what we do. For us specifically here, that's the focus on our ocean interfaces, our launchers, our tubes, our platform HMNE, as well as the integration into the combat system. We have a variety of ocean interfaces on the submarine. Um, different hatches, torpedo tubes, three inch launchers, six inch launchers, and much larger vertical tubes. So all of these tubes, hatches, launchers have to be designed, maintained, and they have to be safe. So that's one of the challenges with payload integration, and that's what this department really focuses on. And that's why we have this facility that has actual shipboard systems with each of these launchers. Our launcher complex laboratory that we have here at Division Newport is a world-class national asset that maintains the system test capability that's not found anywhere else in the Navy's land-based facility. From a payload side, we can then take payloads and put them in our facilities and test them. And the big difference here is when you're in a laboratory, you can tinker, you can play, you can rework, you can stand back and say, well, that didn't work, let's try this. On a submarine, you can't do that. Everything is extremely controlled and time is precious. And then your last step is, hey, now system is ready. Let me take it to the submarine and test it. And once everything works, you want to hand that system to the fleet. And that's when you realize I'm giving the system to an 18-year-old. And you want to make sure you're building a simple system. Even though it's a complex problem, it has to be a simple system that 18 year old can use. In the payload world, we're problem solvers here. People come to us with really hard problems because we are specialists in solving them. We're really good at it. We know the systems. We work across the board with the, the payload developers, the shipbuilders, the warfighters, the maintainers. People come to Division Newport when they know they need to get a technology integrated onto a submarine. So our next generation attack submarine, the SSNX, is gonna be one of the first submarine designs purely built with alternative payloads in mind. The Navy's planning a new attack submarine, SSNX, that will bring payload integration and launching capability to another level that it has never seen before. The future submarine design programs have this opportunity to really design the ocean interfaces around payload integrations. Our work going forward on payload integration for SSNX is going to keep our workforce busy for the next 30 plus years. So as we look into the future, we are applying our system expertise and our facilities and everything we've learned to ensure we're bringing those capabilities and new technologies to meet the future warfighter demands.